Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University, and welcome to Vlog 35, What is Research Impact? This vlog today is informed and inflected by international research policy and international research protocols. Because you see, in the UK, particularly through the REF, there was a national research impact policy put in place. And through much of my career, most of my senior academic career, I worked in the UK. And I was part of those entries for the RAE and the REF, creating, can I say, some pretty good results. But Australia is importing its definition of impact from the REF definition of impact, so from the United Kingdom. So whether you are interested in working in Australia for the bulk of your academic career or you're thinking about international careers beyond Australia, then the work today we're doing on research impact will help you. The first truth I need to tell you before I define research impact is that research quality and research impact are two different things. The RAE and the REF panels in the United Kingdom and the ERA field of research codes are different. In the United Kingdom, all the panels, whether they're in the high humanities or the hard sciences, are peer reviewed. And that's simply not the case in the ERA field of research codes. So that means that you would present your four best, highest quality publications that would be read and assessed by the experts in your field. Now, in most areas of Australian research and academic life, that work is not read. There are proxies for research quality, such as citations. So the first truth that I need to tell you, as someone who created a pretty successful REF entry in the United Kingdom, is that the publications that I entered for research quality and the publications that I entered for research impact were different publications. Now I'm going to state that again. The publications that I entered for research quality and the publications I entered to be assessed via research impact were different publications. So in terms of your career, what I'm suggesting to you today is you need to develop two arms or two arcs of your research. I need you to focus very strongly on research quality every single year of your academic life. I want you to arch above and beyond what you can do. Arch to the absolute extremity of your intellectual ability. That's what I want for you. And write that publication up. Make it magnificent. Make it research quality. That's important. But secondly, it is also important that you configure an impact arc. So that is components of your research career that may have some resonance or some engagement with layers of government, community organisations, leisure organisations, and an array of small, medium or large sized businesses. Now, there are some researchers who are automatically excluded from these impact discussions. So for my guys and gals out there, hello, who work in higher education studies, and I get that, a bit of my career is in higher education studies, team, you are pretty well excluded from impact discussions by default, because the definition of impact is producing work that has resonance beyond higher education. So if you're working in higher education studies, your impact is within higher education studies. Now don't be worried about that. All of us as research leaders know that, so be calm and be relaxed. But this is the important bit for my wonderful guys and gals out there working in education, particularly early years, early childhood, primary and secondary education research. My goodness me, your time is now. So Shani, my love, all that great work you're doing on curricula, integrated curricula and new modalities of assessment, with its impact in schools, my goodness me, this is going to be your time. So for my great guys and gals in education, this is a really important vlog for you. So research impact is defined as research that has logged and ver verifiable resonance beyond the university sector. 
and it's not simply a vibe. That impact must be demonstrable. It must be provable. So our research must be proven to transform the economy, culture, health and well-being, leisure, the workplace, the environment, or indeed, and this is quite a difficult narrative to construct, quality of life. So there are three particular ways to configure or think about impact, and this might help you to break down the definition a little bit. Impact is often described as, or is defined as, instrumental impact, conceptual impact, and capacity building. Instrumental, conceptual, and capacity building. I'll talk a little bit about each of those three. So, instrumental impact is when you influence in a really organic and careful way policy development or service delivery. So you're finding a way to alter behavior or to change legislation. So for men and women, particularly high guys, working in leisure studies, working in physical studies, thinking about movement cultures, this is a great example for you. So big hi to everyone working in sports studies. That's important. Two, conceptual impact. That is changing how policy infrastructures and definitions are formed. So I'll give you an example of this that I'm doing at the moment. Don't know if it'll be successful, but I'm having a go. So this is conceptual impact. I'm currently doing some work with the Department of Correctional Services in South Australia. And at the moment, they have a policy for prison arts and prison industries, and they're separate. So I'm trying to offer to them a series of models and conceptual strategies to align prison arts and prison industries into a new configuration of prison creative industries. Really up to date theorization and conceptual work that's dragging a lot of that theorization of creative arts, which of course you know, has some resonance and some history 70 years ago. So it's really updating that model of how we think about arts and industry for the South Australian government. So let's see if I'm successful, but that's an example of conceptual impact, right? The final category is capacity building. So this is when you impact on an industry through enabling technical, technological or skill development. Very common, for example, in tourism. So tourism scholars, for example, go out into tourism industries and really enable skill development. Also, for my wonderful students in business, hi to you guys, Abdullah, big respect, hi mate. Great example, often this is where you'll find business research. So for example, Abdullah's research in governance is incredibly important for capacity building. Yeah? So they're the three types of impact and often we're working in one of those. It's very rare that you would work in all three. So in the UK, the word impact is used pretty well synonymously with knowledge exchange. So if you come across that phrase, knowledge exchange, don't be worried. That means whatever knowledge you have, it is exchanged with stakeholders. They take it, they use it, they create feedback back to you, and that continues. So knowledge exchange is research through iterations. It's not, I have research, you have it. It's a much more complex and organic feedback loop. Okay, so for the Australian agenda, our higher education policy is a bit different internationally because the focus has been so strongly on what's called, inverted commas, science and innovation and productivity. And those three words are completely tethered to economic growth, right? So that's sort of our project at the moment. So this means in Australia, impact must be, yes, measurable, but also it's about the Australian taxpayer seeing a return for their investment in our research. So impact provides information to governments, to community organisations, to businesses about the benefits that are derived from the money spent in Australian research. Importantly, this is not about scholarship. This is not about the research that works absolutely at the edge of expertise, absolutely at the edge of knowledge, that really exciting stuff. It's not about that type of research. It's simply about proving that the research that you're working on has an influence, impact, resonance with stakeholders beyond the university. 
So impact is defined really also by the selection of the area. So right at the start of your research, pick something that clearly will have a resonance beyond the university. But it's also about the promotion of that research area. It's making sure that there's at least one component of your CV, your research, that arches beyond a university. But that's not the end of this conversation. You also have to configure strategies for the really innovative dissemination of that research to diverse stakeholders. You've got to build up over years, decades sometimes, those relationship with governmental organisations, music industries, for example, leisure organisations, and a whole range of small, medium and large businesses. But then, most importantly, you have to document, you have to provide evidence of how your research is actually engaging with and transforming the practice of those communities. So as you've picked up, as we've talked about this year, social media is everything, everything. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, podcasts, vodcasts, open access really matters. Remember you're engaging with communities who don't have libraries with subscriptions to all these journal bundles. So open access, the capacity for your research to be read by diverse communities, incredibly important. And even if your research is restricted behind a credit card paywall, please remember to use podcasts, use vodcasts to point to that research and talk about that research in a way that is free for lots of different people to hear and to use. So we've talked throughout these vlogs that simply producing research is great, but it's certainly not the end point. You have to focus on, you must focus on dissemination strategies. And that means, yes, disseminating to your academic colleagues, but also really thinking about platform management. What is the best place to put bits of your research so that it can resonate with a diversity of audiences beyond academics. So to help you with this pathway from research to impact, and pathway is the language we use, guys, there's actually five stages from thinking about a research idea to impact. And let's go through those. And you'll notice most academics stop at about stage three, and there's actually five. So of course it starts with inputs, research inputs, so that means you get that grant, you get that research income, you're able to attract staff, you're able to develop infrastructure. So you've got the lab, you've got the materials, you've got the stuff, the kit that you need. That's the first stage, inputs. Secondly, research activities. Research activities, and that of course includes you, so PhD students, research training is part of those research activities, so is creating conferences and all sorts of presentations, workshops for example, really important, membership of academic and learned societies, and also a whole series of community and stakeholder engagements. And that might, for example, include board managements for different community organisations. Right, two, three, outputs. This is where most academics stop. Outputs, so publications, e-publications, patents, policy briefings, media briefings. Great, we need to go a step further, which is four, outcomes. So that might mean licenses, revenue, new companies, spin-offs, venture capital, job creation, yes citations, and also policy interventions happen here. But even that's not the final stage. If we're really doing impact properly, there is a fifth stage, and it is called benefits where you have to demonstrate economic, health, social, cultural, environmental transformation, how you've impacted on quality of life or provision of public services. Have you, for example, improved the education, the skill development of a particular workforce? Have you enabled job creation? Have you improved risk management in businesses? So again, very important for our colleagues in business. A lot of what you're doing is mitigating and managing risk, helping businesses mitigate and manage risk, perhaps through governance protocols. So therefore, that is a huge benefit that you're providing to the planet. Remember that. So how can I help you create impact today? Let's do this. Here are some strategies. 
The first one is the obvious one. When you're thinking about a research project, start with a collaboration. So don't start with a vibe, oh, this is what I'd really like to do. That's great and that's important research. But if you're interested in impact, start with a collaboration. Have a real world collaboration and ask men and women, different organisations, what their challenges or problems are and enable that to configure and shape your research. If you start there, then your impact is much more measurable and trackable. Okay, so applied research works very, very well when we're thinking about an impact narrative. But also be aware that you may be reducing your ability to generate and produce quality research. So always remember, try and keep those two arms of your research going. Okay, so we've thought about the type of project, but to gain traction and to gain impact, you have to build relationships with research users. And that requires you creating multiple cycles, multiple iterations of engagement with research users. And in fact, you really don't use the phrase research users because that suggests you're producing research that they use. Actually, stakeholder is appropriate here. It's a dodgy word that I don't like using. But in the case of impact, they are stakeholders. They're not users. They're actually working in a feedback loop to improve and enhance the research. They're not using anything. They're enhancing, improving and engaging with your research. So listen to those men and women and really listen to what they want from you. Ask them what sort of research would help you and listen to them and provide that research. Now I'm well aware that that will sometimes, most of the time, sometimes involve you producing work that may appear a bit dated. So providing research or conceptual paradigms that perhaps 10, 15, 20 years ago in academic discourse were discounted. And that's okay. That's why I'm saying impact and quality are often two very different things. So understand the policy goals in your particular area, whether it's medicine, biological sciences, drama, criminology, and understand how policy is quite different from the top end of research. So also be considerate and think about the intermediaries of social media. Think about agents of translation, amplifiers and network builders. LinkedIn, Twitter, great examples of that. And also be flexible. Where you thought the research would go is probably not where this research is going to go. If you're listening to your stakeholders, then the research is going to go in a different direction. So the key final point I'd like to make to you in this discussion of impact is why it's a great idea, whatever you may think of the politics or whatever about this, why impact is great is it demands that all of us as scholars think about why we're doing this research. What are you trying to do? Who's your audience? Then I want you to choose the format, choose the platform that allows your research to find its audience. It is important that you create a research schedule, that you are predictable and you demonstrate time management because you've got to have deliverables, guys. So this is not about sort of a vibe when you feel like doing research, when you feel like writing stuff up. These are very hard deadlines and they're very hard for academics to reach. So it is a different way of thinking about research. And so while there are some intellectual and some political challenges with research impact, why it is great, I think, is it makes all of us think about research narratives. How can we tell the story of our research with effectiveness and with clarity? Why is it important? Why are you doing this research? Why should your colleagues care? Indeed, why should the planet care? Important. So when you answer those questions, then ladies and gentlemen, that is your pathway to impact. As always, I wish you love, I wish you light, I wish you peace. Tia.